The most common toxic gases found in confined spaces are carbon monoxide, CO, and hydrogen sulfide, H2S. What are the most common toxic gases in confined spaces? Toxic gases can be produced by materials deliberately used or stored in confined spaces, can be produced by natural processes, can be accidentally introduced into the space, or in the case of sewers and large interconnected systems, can migrate into the area where work is being performed. The most common toxic gases found in confined spaces are carbon monoxide, CO, and hydrogen sulfide, H2S. These gases are usually measured by means of substance-specific electrochemical toxic gas sensors. Gas that enters the sensor undergoes a reaction that produces an electric current from the sensor that is proportional to the concentration of gas. Volatile organic chemical vapors are potentially present in many confined spaces as well, especially spaces associated with the oil and petrochemical industry. They are often toxic at very low concentrations. Volatile organic chemical vapors are normally measured by means of photoionization detector, sensors that measure in parts per million, or even smaller increments. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, and highly toxic gas that is produced as a byproduct of incomplete combustion. Carbon monoxide bonds to the hemoglobin molecules in red blood cells, preventing them from properly transporting oxygen. Carbon monoxide is potentially present whenever combustion occurs. It is particularly associated with internal combustion engine exhaust. Carbon monoxide can be generated by hot work that involves combustion, operating internal combustion engines within the confined space, or introduced into the space by improper use of ventilation equipment. Vehicle exhaust has been implicated in many accidents. Verify that blowers and ventilation equipment introduce only fresh air into the space and that atmosphere evaluated from the space is vented safely. Carbon monoxide is a chronically toxic gas. Prolonged or repeated exposure to relatively low concentrations of carbon monoxide can eventually lead to injury, illness, or death. Although high concentrations of carbon monoxide may be acutely toxic and lead to immediate respiratory arrest or death, it is the long-term physiological effects due to chronic exposure at lower concentrations that take the greatest toll on affected workers. Even when exposure levels are too low to produce immediate symptoms, small repeated doses can reduce the oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood over time to dangerously low levels. This partial impairment of the blood supply may lead to serious physiological consequences over time. OSHA permissible exposure limits are published in 29 CFR 1910 subpart G, Occupational Health and Environmental Control, or in subpart Z, Toxic and Hazardous Substances. If the toxic gas concentration exceeds the permissible exposure limit, the atmosphere is hazardous. The OSHA permissible exposure limit for carbon monoxide is 50 parts per million, calculated as an 8-hour time-weighted average limit. The NIOSH recommended exposure limit consists of a two-part definition, an 8-hour time-weighted average limit of 35 parts per million, and a ceiling limit of 200 parts per million. The American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists, ACGIH, threshold limit value for carbon monoxide is 25 parts per million, calculated as an 8-hour time-weighted average. Hydrogen sulfide, H2S, is produced by the action of anaerobic, sulfur-fixing bacteria on materials that contain sulfur. It is commonly associated with raw sewage, animal products, and the pulp and paper industry but can occasionally be encountered in almost any confined space. It is a constituent of natural gas, petroleum, sulfur deposits, volcanic gases, and sulfur springs. It is especially associated with oil production and refining activities. Exposure limits for H2S vary widely as a function of jurisdiction and workplace activity. The most widely recognized standards for H2S reference an 8-hour time-weighted average of either 10 parts per million and a 15-minute short-term exposure limit of no more than 15 parts per million. The American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists threshold limit value for H2S is much more conservative. It consists of an 8-hour time-weighted average limit of 1.0 parts per million and a 15-minute short-term exposure limit of 5.0 parts per million. 
When in doubt, be conservative. Concentrations above 100 parts per million should be regarded as immediately dangerous to life and health, with the potential for causing irreversible physiological harm to the exposed individual. Many monitoring programs use instruments with the alarm set to sound immediately if the concentration reaches 10 parts per million, in which case the workers immediately leave the affected area. This approach essentially eliminates the potential of ever reaching short-term exposure limit or time-weighted average exposure limits. Volatile organic chemicals are organic compounds characterized by their tendency to evaporate easily at room temperature. Familiar volatile organic chemicals include solvents, paint thinner, and nail polish remover, as well as the vapors associated with fuels such as gasoline, diesel, heating oil, kerosene, and jet fuel. This category also includes many specific toxic chemicals such as benzene, butadiene, hexane, toluene, xylene, and many others. Increased awareness of the toxicity of these common contaminants has led to lowered exposure limits and increased requirements for direct measurement of these substances at their exposure limit concentrations. Instruments equipped with photoionization detectors are increasingly being used as the detection technique of choice in these applications. Volatile organic chemicals present multiple potential threats in the workplace environment. Many volatile organic chemicals vapors are heavier than air and can act to displace the atmosphere in an enclosed environment or confined space. Oxygen deficiency is a leading cause of injury and death in confined space accidents. The literature contains many examples of fatal accidents caused by oxygen deficiencies due to displacement by volatile organic chemicals vapors. Most volatile organic chemicals vapors are flammable at surprisingly low concentrations. For instance, the lower explosion limit concentrations for toluene and hexane are only 1.1%, 11,000 parts per million. By comparison, it takes 5% volume methane, 50,000 parts per million, to achieve an ignitable concentration in the air. Because most volatile organic chemicals produce flammable vapors, in the past, the tendency has been to measure them by means of combustible gas measuring instruments. Combustible gas reading instruments usually provide readings in percent lower explosion limit increments, where 100% lower explosion limit indicates a fully ignitable concentration of gas. Combustible gas instrument alarms are usually set to go off if the concentration exceeds 5% or 10% lower explosion limit. Unfortunately, most volatile organic chemicals vapors are also toxic, with permissible exposure limit values that are much lower than 10% lower explosion limit. Volatile organic chemicals vapors are commonly measured by means of photoionization detector sensors. Photoionization detectors use high-energy ultraviolet light from a lamp housed within the detector as a source of energy used to remove an electron from neutrally charged volatile organic chemicals molecules producing a flow of electrical current proportional to the concentration of the contaminant. The amount of energy needed to remove an electron from the target molecule is called the ionization energy for that substance. The larger the molecule, or the more double or triple bonds the molecule contains, the lower the ionization energy. In general, the larger the molecule, the easier it is to detect. This is very different than the performance characteristics of the catalytic type combustible sensor.